Welcome to this week's video and welcome back to the living room. Episode 3 of my little living room makeover. I got so much done in this video, I'm not even hanging around, I'm getting straight into it. Wall panelling and wall papering, let's get into it. Okay, back to it. Wall one, done. I'm now going to do this wall. So messy, I am tripping over everything. It's still looking like a construction site. So cannot wait to have this wall done. Everything painted in the room and all of this mess gone because it's quite hard to Netflix and chill when there's mess everywhere. And now the measuring begins. Because I took a couple of days off from doing this while I was waiting on supplies, I am now feeling like I'm starting all over again, but I'm hoping it will all just come back to me. I have my measurements from this wall and I have my little block of wood that I am using as my template. So I'll just make sure, I think, I want to do the two big strips first. Most important that they are level with the one over there. Because if they're not, that would drive me crazy. So I'm going to mark out the two top pieces and get them on. So just like in last week's video, I am roughly drawing out the measurements in pencil before I commit to sticking all of the pieces onto the wall just so I can avoid any mistakes, which I am prone to making. On this wall, I only used adhesive and I taped the larger pieces. The reason why I didn't want to use my nail gun in this wall was because there is outlets and I don't know where the wires are behind. I didn't want to accidentally nail gun into a wire. And there's also plumbing because there's a radiator and I did not know the location of any of the pipes. So I didn't want to nail gun into anything. So the adhesive I'm using is the one from last week. So it's the Sudoff Fix All Turbo. And I'm using this and I'm putting a good amount on the back and then I'm pressing it into the wall. It sets in 20 minutes, cures in three hours. And yeah, didn't need to use my nail gun. This wall was a bit easier than the wall from last week because I only had two squares on the bottom because of the radiator. And I kind of had to center the wall away from the light switch, if that makes sense. So I think it looks okay. So I kind of centered all of my framing pieces around the radiator. After I stick the pieces of wood trim onto the wall, I caulk as I go. You could leave this all to the end if you find caulking fun. I like to do it as I go. I feel like it speeds up the process even though it probably doesn't. So I just put the pieces of wood trim on. Well, sorry, I cut them to size, stick them on, caulk them. I'm making it sound very easy, but it is a bit of a laborious job.
So another day in the bag. I started this at 10, it's now just about five o'clock and I have literally just ran out of cock just <laughs> as I've got to the end. So I need to go get some cock. So that is this swab done. I did make a mistake, but it was a happy mistake. I accidentally cut it's a length for the end, uh, 10 centimeters too short, but it actually worked out handy. Um, and I didn't have to waste the wood because I used it as my panel for over the radiator. So I'll give you a little, a little look. Okay, something I don't know if you can notice. I'm gonna bring you close so you can see. I had some, as this paint was curing, I noticed I had some stains and I think it is the caulk. So you can kind of see it here. It's so hard to see on the camera. But if you can see, I don't know if you can even see up here, just around the areas. I haven't had this before with this caulk, so I'm thinking maybe it's the paint because it's a matte paint that I used. But what I did while I was waiting on some pieces to dry over here was I put some primer over it, uh, a stain block and primer, and then I've just painted a coat of paint and that seems to have done the job. So I'm going to see here, it feels like it's a bit mucky or muddy. The colour seems a bit muddy. I don't know, let me know if you can see it or if it's just me being a little bit nitpicky. <laughs> but um, this wall has to be painted. Oh, this wall be looking expensive. Um, this wall has to be painted. So I'm going to do all of the painting tomorrow and I will... I think maybe give this wall another coat of paint. I am also going to have to hang on. So as you can see, I have the bay window and I have the wall here. I did mark it. Now I have a problem. I have no more of these. I had enough to do this wall, but I do have lots of the strips left. So what I was possibly thinking was maybe just doing a long strip down here, like a, a box. The thing that's thrown me off is um, it's not symmetrical with this wall here. So this wall has an outlet and it has a vent and it has like um, television stuff. So I'm not gonna be able to fit a strip of wood down here. So, and it's also not the same size. So do I do like a strip just custom to the size here? And then I also have the bay window, which could have some wood trim on it. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this wall and then decide and see, hang on, let me stand back. Yeah, and then I'll decide. So here we have one wall done and then we have the other wall. And then, yeah, I can make a decision here. It might be too much if I keep going, adding loads of framing, it may be too much. Maybe this is enough. So I'm going to sleep on it and then tomorrow we will paint this wall. I actually have to paint the rest of the room <laughs> because that paint is matte and the original is a satin. So I actually need to paint the whole room tomorrow very riveting. Before I get started with painting, I wanted to just show you the sunlight in the room. So this room, I think I said it before, it doesn't get a lot of um, sunshine. Like the back of my house gets all of the sunshine. So in the morning, especially this time of year when it's brighter, this is the sunshine you get in the morning. So it's actually a nice room to Sometimes if I have a little bit of work to do, emails or something, I will sit in the sunshine with a cup of tea and this is the lighting that I'll get probably until maybe half nine, 10 a.m. And then the sun is in the back of the house and it's gone. But yeah, this is, this time of year, it just be quite nice. And um, if you're sitting here and you have your morning cup of tea, it is quite nice. So it's also gonna be quite nice to do some painting in the sunshine as well.
It is a new day and it is time to wallpaper. I didn't know if I was going to get another wall panels and wallpapering done in this video, but I'm on a roll. Also, I have tea, but look at the cute mug. Oh, toss it, I'm going to fall there. Look at the cute mug that my friend dropped into me last night. She was at um, Centre Parks in Longford, is it? It's like a adventure place and she did a pottery no she didn't make this <laughs> I was like did you make that um she did a, a pottery workshop with the fam and uh she's like I got you a little present and I was like how cute is that I love a good mug so yeah I don't know where you can get this but I know my regular viewers we love a good mug definitely a garden related mug so I was chuffed with that so the plan is we've got you know, Laura Ashley, which is why we're only doing the chimney breast because I have expensive taste for wallpaper. In fairness, you used to be able to get a lot of the Laura Ashley wallpaper on sale. There used to be shops here in Ireland, but they closed down, like a lot of shops during the pandemic. And you used to be able to get rolls for like 20 quid when they were on sale. But um, no such luxury. I think B&Q have some Laura Ashley wallpaper, but it is actually cheaper to buy it in pound and get it shipped. So, just a little tip. Paper I am using today is Paste the Wall. We like that one. And it is Elderwood in the shade Natural, and she is Laura Ashley, and there's lovely little birdies in it. So, I have tidied, I'll show you. I do have two rolls, even though I think this chimney rest I don't think one roll would be enough just from the last time it's been wallpapered. This is like the third time it's been papered in the 10 years I've been here. When I first moved in, there was red floral wallpaper raging that I don't have any pictures of that. Then I put on like a, um, what is that pattern? I wonder do I have any pictures of that? I put on this, uh, who remembers, my framed, the pieces of wallpaper either side. It was like a silvery, goldy, brocade pattern and then the last wallpaper was a Laura Ashley and that was Beatrice Sickleman I think is the name did really like it I think I just fancied a change and it was a bit grey toned but I have tidied um I still have my little work table here so I just have the strips of wood that I have left over, but I am going to do some wood trim around here. I've just ran out of caulk and I have a little bit of wall paint left, but you'll probably know that I have to paint behind the cabinets because that is the new paint and that is the old paint and that will drive me mad. So I think I have enough left to do the two here and then I need to go get more paint. So this wall, it, hang on, I'm tripping over things. So this wall is done, absolutely love it. Gave it two coats of paint and I touched up the paint that was here as well. So I was saying yesterday that there was like some muddy patches on this wall. So I just primed them and painted over them and I'm super happy with this. So two walls, all panelled, really happy. I also painted this wall, top and bottom. So now I'm going to use the floor. I'm just going to give it a hoover and a clean because I'm going to, I don't have a wallpaper table so I'm going to just use the floor for my measuring and cutting because it's paste the wall wallpaper. The great thing about this is, so normally when you are doing a chimney breast, you will center your first strip in the middle and you will have to find that center. But I noticed, I don't know if you can see, a pencil line going all the way up here. So when I was stripping the wallpaper, I copped the pencil line and that is the center. So if it's, um, this wallpaper is the same width as the last one. So I already have my center line, which if you saw last week's video with all the carry on with the mat, trying to figure out how to panel this wall and get all of the squares in, I am absolutely delighted that I don't have to do any more configuration. So all I have to do is cut it, stick it on, job done. So when wallpapering, some people, and it's probably the proper way to do it, will measure 
the wall. Then you have the measurement of your repeat. And then you leave a gap on the bottom and the top so that you can score across it. You can either cut it with a wallpaper, scissors, or use a really sharp blade. So <laughs> I'm just sort of person, but I'm gonna try the proper way where you measure how much you need, add on the repeat, and leave some extra top and bottom on the floor and cut it. Normally I'll have a, like the last, when I wallpaper Lily's bedroom, Nanny Siobhan helped me. I was, you know, I was really tempted to ring Nanny Siobhan because the kids are all in school at the moment. So Granny Siobhan would help me. I don't know, she probably won't answer the phone to me because she knows I'm looking for someone to help me wallpaper. <laughs> so when I have someone helping me, grand, I just go up and let it fall, they hold it. Yeah, it looks good, cut it, then stick it and trim it. But I don't have that second pair of hands today. Anyway, I am just procrastinating. There is no need for me to be. I'm also procrastinating doing me vat. <laughs> so it's either do my vat and send it, or wallpaper the wall. <laughs> so here we are, I've chosen to wallpaper the wall. A vat man can we? Okay, let's go. So when it came to wallpaper, and I, I measured the wall and I added excess to what I'm cutting. So for example, if the wall was 50 inches, I am measuring out 60 inches just to give me some room on the top and on the bottom that I can cut it nice and straight when it's up there. So you'll probably notice that I'm using a wallpaper scissors. You can absolutely use a really sharp blade. I just don't have one. And I find myself, I can get a nice precise cut. I'm good at cutting straight, I have to say that. Um, but absolutely use whatever you are comfortable with. I am more confident cutting the straight line with the scissors. But if you wanna do a blade and you find it useful, do that. Just make sure it is a sharp blade because when I have tried to use some blades in the past, they have been blunt and they will tear the paper. So make sure it's nice and sharp. For my next strip, I will be doing a magic trick. I have to figure out how to do this. So my strip of wallpaper comes out of here, that's grand. So it's going to be the length down. So it's gonna be cover like, oh where's my hand? <laughs> this section. So I need to figure out how to cut it so that then it'll wrap around here. Does this make any sense? So I have two awkward angles on this chimney breast because I have to do the same on the other side. The first time I did it, I put the piece of paper up. I measured the distance um, from the front section of the chimney breast. I hope I'm explaining this. And then I cut that out and then I had excess, which was my drop for the other side. Now, when I did this the second time, which you'll see in a few minutes later, I just put it up, I pasted the top, stuck that up, and then I cut it while the strip of paper was attached to the wall, and I found that easier. So the only way to describe how I got the paper to bend into place was, I cut it at an angle as if you are wrapping a paper and you're going around a corner and you snip into it, 
same with like if you're cutting fabric and you snip into the corner or you clip the curve I hope that makes sense to someone um but that's how I got it to go around and then the same thing I just left some excess paper and then I run my finger down it and score it with my nail and then trim off the excess paper and stick it on and press it down with a damp cloth While the bookcases were out, I decided to paint behind the wall. Now, it wasn't a good idea to put a strip of a paper and then decide to paint the wall. But when I did the other side, I painted first and then stuck up the final strip of paper.
I love it, love it, love it. I badly need lunch though. Now, I don't have enough wallpaper to, I don't have enough scraps to put some wallpaper in the squares behind me, but this wallpaper, sometimes things, mm, they always look different on camera and in photos, but this print is a bit busy. Like I love it on the fireplace. I think if I was to put this into some of the things behind me, it would be absolutely beautiful to look at on camera and on Instagram, but I think to live with it in my sitting room, it would definitely be too busy for me. Um, it would be very cool, very maximalist, very bougie hotel, but for me sitting in it, I think it would be too much. It would be too much. So I'm gonna let the paste dry. Um, there was a couple of bubbles in the first one, but as the paste has dried, they're gone, which is great, because I was like, oh no, bubbles. Um, and I'm just waiting on the wall paint to dry, and then your girl has to do a big clean up. Um, this is all I have left over. I'd say it's not even a full length, but I will hang on to it for something. Hang on to it for something. Things I need to do is, will my camera move? I need to paint the door. As you can see, it is grey. It is Dolphin. See, I'm tripping over everything. Um, that is Dolphin by Authentico. Painted that years ago. And I'm going to paint the front of it white because it obviously leads onto the hallway. And the back of the door is painted in La Creme. Same colour as the back, but it just needs an extra coat of paint. I am really happy with how it is turning out. I haven't even thought of like putting pretty stuff on the mantelpiece and all of that. I've just been too busy doing the big jobs. Time for lunch and a rest. I think I'm going to sleep on it and clean up and we'll revisit it in the morning. Quick recap for anybody who may just be joining in on the living room adventure. But here's some befores. Uh, dead flies on the windowsill, mucky walls, chipped painted skirting boards, old paper, looking a bit dull, and here's what it's looking like now. that is where I am. I didn't really clean, um, <laughs> I didn't really clean up. I still have my, um, my stool with my paint <laughs> next to me. Um, but here are some things I am thinking. This is what my brain is thinking. I'm thinking of maybe stitching some new cushion covers for the couch, but in a green hue to pick up on the green. So instead of, the pink, maybe doing some green to pick up on the green in the wallpaper. There is also green in the florals on my couch and there is some green in this. So there is a five euro fabric place, I think in Newbridge, it might, I don't know if it's still there, I think it is. So maybe we could take a spin and we could go out and see if I can get some fabric. Um, so I'm thinking of stitching some new cushion covers. I'll also have a look online as well, but I hate when you try and buy a cushion in a shop and I don't want the whole thing, I just want the cover. Another thing I was thinking is, I know I said how I have um, panel strips for the bay window, but I was thinking, and a couple of you had suggested it in the comment section on one of the previous videos, was doing a, um, like a bay window, why can't I think of the word? Like a seat and nook, like a, a window seat, a window seat. And I have seen people do Ikea hacks where they take, I don't know what piece of furniture it is, and they turn it into a seating thing. The only thing about that is, and it's probably really silly, 
but some of you might get it. That's where my Christmas tree goes. Um, so if I do a seating thing, um, it eats into the floor space. That is not a big problem. Your Christmas tree is only up, well, most people for like three weeks of the year. For me, it's a good six. Um, I can put my Christmas tree in here behind me. I could use the smaller tree um, that I used to use in the bedroom. Like, it's not a big deal, but I was just thinking that. And also, sometimes my poof from the this uh, chair, that also has storage in it, but I sometimes push it over there, out of the way. So if I have a window seat, um, is my poof gonna be, I don't know. I'm over probably thinking that they're not big issues. I do think a window seat would be A, another project to flex my woodwork skills, and B, it would give me seating. I know my niece and nephew would love it, um, because they do sit on the poof at the window and they're always kicking their legs and like they'd be eating stuff even though they ain't supposed to be eating in an anti-catch and sitting room but they do. So that is where I'm at. I haven't even thought of doing, I did say in a previous video how I have loads of travel photos sitting on my laptop and I would love to do something where I print them on canvas and maybe frame them and stick them up here um, in the, like maybe one here or something over there. I'm not sure. I'm really enjoying the walls just being panelled. Um, so I don't wanna do too much. Another thing I need to do is I need to clean my couch. I don't know if you copped, my gray couch has some black marks on it. I think it's just from bringing in firewood and stuff like over winter, there's some marks on it. Um, so I, I it's also still need to paint the door white and another coat of paint. So I'm on the snag list now. I'm on the snag list, but yeah, and my fireplace. Some of you will remember I had a white mirror. I loved white mirror. Got it off my friend Joanne, Joanne Gondon. And I painted it and I put it above the mantelpiece. I was thinking maybe the, the mirror fits perfectly up here. Um, but I don't know if that kind of makes any sense to put the mirror up there. But I haven't put the mirror back up on the mantelpiece because I'm admiring the wallpaper. <laughs> I don't want to block it with a big mirror. So um, yeah, I don't know. The mirror could be cute up there. Could be. Not sure, but that is where I am. I will pop a link if you want to check out. Um, the other videos was just me paneling that wall. That one is a bit harder. I did the five squares on the bottom, and the other video is me doing some prep. So I had like some lots of dead flies in the windowsill. My skirting boards were disgraceful. I had mucky walls. You know the sus. Um, but I'm liking how it's nice and fresh now. I said in a previous video how this living room was just reminding me of, you know, it was giving me 2020 vibes. It was stale. Your girl had had too many, it was just stale energy. Too many lazy days in here. I just wasn't feeling the energy, whereas now I feel like it's a bit fresher. So, still things to do. Get there. The bulk of it is done. The bulk of it, the hard work is done. I also love how my teacup collection pops. It's like the, I don't know if the patterns or something of the wallpaper is making the teacups and tea, the, my little teapot, this one, pop. The pattern, new country rose, like boom. But that's where I'm at. Hope you've enjoyed the process so far. It is only myself doing it. I'd be quicker if I had a bit of help, but sure, here we are. If you are new to my channel, welcome to the community. Check out the recent videos. Sunday does be a garden video and Thursday is a home house related video, crafty, whatever, the bits. Um, so hit the subscribe button for my regular viewers. Hope you enjoyed this one. I know it was a long one. Cheeky thumbs up, maybe two or three thumbs up. And I'll chat to you all in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.